Hello Cyclocross fans and welcome back to this edition of Crosstalk This Week. The lovely, very talented Katie Compton, the 10 time national champion Katie Compton. So Katie, in these interviews we like to take it outside the race course a little bit. We talk to you obviously all the time, right before a race, right after the race. Let's, we want to get to the untold story. Let's, let's go all the way back. Where, <laughs> where are you from? What were you like before cycling? Um, I'm from Newark, Delaware. Um, before cycling, that's a long time because I was eight when I started. Um, but I was playing all the sports. My mom and dad got me into pretty much everything. Like I did, I mean, I started in ballet, which wasn't pretty. <laughs> then, <laughs> ballet, like ballet, I did like all the gym sports. I did like field hockey, lacrosse, basketball, softball, swimming, soccer, like ice hockey. Figure, I started figure skating, realized I was bad at that, but I was better at ice hockey, go figure. But, <laughs> um, that and then bike racing, equestrian, I kind of, I did all of it. Um, did you know from an early age, playing all those other sports, mm -hmm. like, did you always excel as an athlete or, or, or on the other side, did you always know, yeah. like, I, I really am drawn to this? Yeah, I was always athletic. Like, I was the one that was per picked first in gym class, which was nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, just always good at sports, and I love playing sports, I love being outside, um, and I think when you're naturally good at it too, you just want to do more of it. But bike racing was what I was the best at by far, so I just kind of, I kept doing that. So eight years old in mm -hmm. Delaware, mm -hmm. how, is, how does one find bike racing? My dad was a bike racer, my mom, um, she trained for marathons, she was a marathoner, and then um, I just went out with bike rides with my dad. He would take me to go, like go get a Snickers bar, you know, Hour and, hour and a half ride away, or we go for ice cream, we go for Slurpees, something food related. It's a little bigger. <laughs> he's like, learn me, I can't tell if he was like, learn me with trees, because he wanted them, or he's like, maybe Katie should exercise more. <laughs> Either way, um, it worked. I got me on my bike, and I loved it, and uh, I just started racing. He put on a race series, a Thursday night series, when I was a kid, and he did that pretty much through high school. Mm -hmm. So I raced street sprints, and then got in the crits with the guys, and I think I was racing like cat four men's races when I was like 12, 13. So it kind of just, I was just good at it. So I just raced a ton of crits and I got onto the track when I was 12. So, so a lot of people <coughs> in the follow cyclocross and yeah. those who have been around long, I mean, they remember, I think it was 2004, Portland yeah. was the first year you won nationals. Yep. And that was like, kind of came out of nowhere. And who's mm -hmm. this, who's mm -hmm. this woman racing cyclocross? Um, but you were, I mean, you, know, you you were young, but you'd yeah. been racing bikes for a long yeah. time. What was what was your cycling career like pre cyclocross being the number one focus? Um, you know, I raced on the junior national team. I went to mm -hmm. junior worlds for, for the road. Um, I was a good a good rider. You know, a good elite rider as a junior. Um, mm -hmm. I raced crits a lot as a crit rider. Um, so I was just I had that background. Then when I got to college, like I just kind of I took a break from it, stepped away. It's hard to go from being a top junior to like racing the elites, you, you have that like time where you're not very good and you're just kind of learning the ropes and getting, you know, loot, like getting beat all the time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took a step back and I kind of figured out what I wanted to do and spending t focus on school and that's when I was mountain biking and I got into cross <coughs> um, <clears throat> in college and um, with some friends of mine I was mountain biking with, like, oh, you should come out and do a cross race. And so I kind of started then, and I actually went to nationals in 2001, so in yeah. Kansas when it was the frozen tundra. So I won the U23, and I think I got fifth in the elite race or something, or seventh, I don't know. But I um, always had that background, but I just wasn't focusing on it, really, yeah. until I think I moved out of Colorado and then started in the Par Paralympic racing in 2002, and then focusing on that, but then that kind of renewed my excitement for bike racing. And I always did cross kind of in our off season because like we had worlds using September for Paris. And so mm -hmm. after that, worlds are European champs or um, Paralympic Games. We're usually late August, September. So once that was done, I would just jump on the cross bike and do local fun stuff. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was just good at that. So I kept doing it. So during that time, yeah. you go into college, you kind of leave the bike aside. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were still riding, but were you always still thinking long term like uh, professional cycling is a thing or what if not what were you thinking at that time what did the 10 year plan look like when you I, went to college i didn't have a 10 i had like a like right now plan <laughs> <laughs> i had what i'm going to do like tomorrow plan 
Um, no, I never had, like even when I was in college, like it was still, I was gonna go to grad school. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like, I could get through college, go to grad school. Bike racing wasn't something I was gonna like even continue with besides the fun local stuff. Um, I was also drinking a lot in <laughs> college. It was, I mean, this is a group I was with. We drank beers a lot, went to the bars afterwards. And then um, I even had my 21st birthday in a bar. My friend's like, you know, I've been serving you for the last year, so you can't celebrate here. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, good point. So I was 21 last year, right? Yeah. Did you? Was it? Yeah. I mean, it, it couldn't have been a. It couldn't have been a talent thing. I mean, you, you must have known that hmm. you could pursue that as a career. So um, it, it seems like maybe you just lost. Yeah. You lost the passion for it a little bit, for for, or just found something else, like you said, with school. Because you said that par the Paralympic yeah. thing sort of kind of re renewed, yeah. re renewed that spark. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think, it just went through a phase where I just didn't like to do it. I when I back a little bit. Well, I went, this is a, it's a common yeah. story. I mean, this is a lot yeah. of kids who, who come yeah. to that phase. Yeah. And I think, like, I went, I did a trip to Europe in 99 from the road team, and, like, I had an awful experience. Like, mm. I hated it. I came back literally, like, I'm never on my bike again. I hate bike racing. I'm awful at it. Like, I'm never going to be good. I'm done. So I came back, and that was kind of, like, where I was for a year or two. Mm. And then it didn't change until 2002 when I got into the para program. Because, like, the coach I was working with, he's a really great coach, and, um, I think he did a great job and I enjoyed working with him and then I enjoyed the racing and just how much we were improving, how fast we were going. I think that got me back into it. Um, but had I not, I think, raced for the pairs, I probably wouldn't have gotten back into it. I probably would have just stayed in Delaware and got a job doing something and um, probably not kept bike racing. Tell me about the, the decision to move on from that to racing for yourself, so to speak. Yeah, that was, I think, 2000. In 2006, um, my partner and I on the tandem, we had won everything we could win. We won world championships, mm -hmm. um, set Olympic world records, won like medals in Athens. Yeah. Um, we had won a lot, and we were really good together. Um, but like we did world champs in 2006 in Switzerland, and mm -hmm. we had our slowest times. Like we weren't riding well. Like it was getting to the point where, like. I was committing a lot of effort and time into this, and my partner, I didn't feel like she was putting that commitment into it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm not gonna do this. If we're not gonna be getting faster and like getting better at this, like I've, we've won enough, and I have a chance to race cross as a pro, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm gonna do that. And so, in 2006, that was my last year racing Paris, and then 2007, um, just focused on cross. Well, and so, and we've yeah. seen over the years, and, and even in the last, yeah. in the recent years, that you could you could be a, obviously a professional cyclocross yeah. racer, but you could be a full time professional mountain bike racer if you wanted, mm. and, and you could you, <laughs> you could, and, and you could. I wouldn't win anything, but I could. <laughs> right, you could. You're better than a lot of people that call it their job, and, and probably the yeah. same same thing on the road. You know, you could ride with the team. Yeah. What was it uh, when you when you had that option mm -hmm. before you became ten time national champion, before you mm -hmm. competed on the the World Cup level? Um, what made you say cyclocross over going to the road or, or, or even staying on the, yeah. on the track as a solo yeah. rider? I think honestly cross picked me. Like this, for some reason with my leg issues, like the intensity of the track cracks me. I love the track, but I was good at it, but I was never great at it. It was always like, I'd be really good domestically, but I would never jump to an international level and be really good at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then with road racing, I don't do well in stage racing because my leg issues, like I just don't, like adapt and get stronger like most people do on the road mm -hmm. i just get tired or more and more tired and then i have my leg cramps so it's like the road racing doesn't work for me um i'm not i'm too big for to be a good climber but i don't have quite enough quickness to be a sprinter i can sit on the front and do tempo which i'd probably a good worker be but like cross is just it's got everything i love it's got the speed it's got the technical part it's got the fitness um you know the race one day races sometimes you know back-to-back -back weekends but it's like if the intensity is there but not it's not the volume where it's like five or six or seven days in a row of it um that i i get bored on the road like i need to be mentally like mm -hmm. focused on something where road racing i'm just like god we have three hours left of this group ride before it gets fun so we're cross so you're constantly like thinking about the lines thinking about like where you can attack and you know the gears and like the tire pressure is like you got the sand, you got mud, you got grass, you got so many different things in a short period of time. So it's good for my focus. Well, yeah. thank you, Katie. Thanks.